Well, let's talk about emotional safety. It's been my observation in working with couples and organizations and people where there's places where there's conflict is that one of the base drivers is the fact that people don't feel safe. And when they don't feel safe, they act out. They get angry. They try to get defensive. They become protective. I thought it would be useful for us to talk about what emotional safety is and how we can create it in our own life. It seems to me that emotional safety, at least as I've seen it and as I've experienced it, is a place where we feel literally safe. We're not anxious. We're not stressed. We don't feel like there's some impending doom, and I don't mean physical doom, but I mean like a social doom. And when we're around other people, we feel as if we're accepted or that we're not going to be rejected or that no matter what we do, everything is going to be okay. And I'm just wondering how many people really have that experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And I don't know, I can't speak for anybody but myself, but again, it's been my observation that not many people experience this. And the reason is they grew up in an emotionally unsafe family. Now, there are a lot of parents who love their children very much, but they tend to emotionally invalidate their children. And when they do that, the child is learning that emotions are not safe. And by emotional invalidation, I mean something as simple as when a little two-year-old skins her knee, don't cry. Don't be a crybaby. Be a big girl. Big girls don't cry. Things like that. Parents say that, trying to soothe, and also thinking that it's a good thing to try to toughen up their child emotionally at two years old. And it, it really, again, my observation is that this is one of the worst things you can do to a child because at two years old, a child is still learning about how to navigate emotions. And if you tell a child not to have an emotion, here's this little girl who's got a skin knee, it hurts, she's scared, she's shamed, she's confused, she wants to be loved, but she feels abandoned. And now the person that she's closest to, her parent, tells her, don't feel what you're feeling. And over a period of years and years and years, that little girl learns that emotions are bad. And she learns to stuff her emotions deep down inside and never feels emotionally safe. And what's the result of that? Well, later in life, when she's an adult in her late teens and early 20s, maybe in college, maybe beyond, how hard will it be for her to feel emotionally safe in an intimate relationship? My observation, again, is working with couples in conflict as a mediator is that they don't feel safe and they've never felt safe with each other. They have a superficial intimacy, maybe what we could call a biological love, but not a really true deep love because they don't feel safe. So how do we correct this? Yeah, of course, it doesn't happen overnight, but as I have taught thousands and thousands of people how to listen to emotions, my observation has been that when people start listening to and reflecting each other's emotions, the speaker feels safe. The speaker feels deeply heard. And more importantly, the speaker feels deeply validated. So much so that invariably the speaker looks at the listener and says, thank you so much for listening to me. I've never felt so deeply heard. And I've seen this happen over and over and over again. So I think the secret to creating emotional safety as an adult is learning this skill of how to listen to and reflect emotions. Alea, what's your take? So I'm gonna spin off of what you were just talking about, that emotional safety and how that little girl, two-year-old or the five-year-old boy, as children, when you had an experience and somebody emotionally invalidated you and they didn't even realize they were emotionally invalidating you, you then learn how to emotionally invalidate yourself. I should be strong. I shouldn't be upset about this. I should not be so angry. I shouldn't be so reactive. I shouldn't feel this way. And when you start getting into that cycle, it sets up a self-hatred and a self-loathing, a self-critic. Then you're constantly judging yourself. And then when you get into social interactions, relationships with other people, how you are with yourself gets projected onto your relationships with others. So if you've got this thing of all of the feelings that I'm having that aren't the good, the happy, the strong, all of those other feelings, they're bad, which means I'm bad. 
So there's something horrible and broken and dark and dirty about me. And then you go into shame. When you're in that shame, you're now going to project that upon your relationships and fear that people will shame you the way you're shaming yourself. And judge way, you, judge you the way that you're judging yourself. Go ahead. And the way you were shamed by your parents. Absolutely. Like that's the relationship dynamic. That's what everybody does. And nobody even realizes it. Something as simple as, oh yeah, it's tough, but this this too shall pass. That's actually emotional invalidation. Or Oh, it is what it is. That's emotional invalidation for yourself and for others. And we are so, we are sensitive beings. We are emotional beings. It's, it's what helps us evolve. And so if we're essentially saying to our emotions, push it down. Now we can't cultivate awareness for it. And now we're not emotionally aware. Now we don't have impulse control. Now we just fly off the handle in a moment and we don't even realize what we've done until we see the destruction that we just created for ourselves or for others. So this whole piece around not feeling safe in your relationships, not feeling safe inside your own self sets up this very challenging dynamic in relationships with yourself and with others and with your body. The one tool that I've learned over 30 years of being in alternative health, meditation, conscious study, studying consciousness, the one piece that I keep coming back to over and over and over again is this core tool of validating yourself and validating others. And the challenging thing is, is that it flies in the face of social mores we have been trained to do the opposite. And so we're having to reprogram ourselves for a different, healthier way of being and using such a powerful, simple tool that changes everything. So it, this leads to another difficult problem that many men and women have faced, people who who've consulted with me, and that is they have what's known as the imposter sim syndrome. I've even felt it myself at times. And here I am, a world-class expert in all this stuff, but there were times in the past when I would walk into a room and say, what am I doing here? Who am I to be doing all of this? And the, I'm a fraud, you know, and somebody's going to lift up the curtain and say, look at the little man behind the curtain there, like the Wizard of Oz. It's a debilitating feeling. I think the idea of imposter syndrome comes from this programming that we talk about when, we are, when parents emotionally invalidate children children are shamed for feeling their emotions. They then begin to shame themselves for feeling emotions. They become technically or task focused to depth, maybe having multiple graduate degrees, very high functioning people, all outward appearances very put together. But underneath there's still that shame, I'm not good enough. I'll never be good enough. I don't belong here. I'm a fraud, I'm a fake. And that's a really tough problem to overcome. And I think it all comes down to learning how to feel emotionally safe with yourself. As you learn how to become emotionally safe with yourself, there's a piece that we'll just plant the seed for. And that is to explore the idea that if you suffer from the imposter syndrome, you've been looking for validation externally. First of all, you've got the inner shame because you've been invalidated by others and then you invalidate yourself. So this inner cycle of shame, you're not feeling lovely, wonderful, and amazing about yourself. Your, your sense of self-worth is low. And one of the major game changers in shifting that to break that cycle of shame, self-hatred, uh, self-doubt, insecurity, social anxiety, imposter syndrome, is to feel into the idea of what would it be like if you were validating you. You take responsibility for validating your emotions, for validating the positive aspects about yourself, which then helps you cultivate a greater sense of self-worth, which then increases your sense of self-confidence and increases your sense of self-love. And then the critic gets quieter and quieter. Another way to work with the feelings of negative self-talk where you've got a little voice in the back of your head telling you how bad you are and what a fake you are and how awful you are, which a lot of people suffer from, and imposter syndrome, and being worried or having a fear of being judged, 
or having a fear of being manipulated or having a fear that you're going to lose you won't have control over situations all of that stems from the lack of emotional safety if you feel safe safety is the opposite of fear if you're feeling emotional safety then these other fears that are so intrusive and so debilitating don't rise up there's no space for them so the secret is to cultivate emotional safety inside yourself and it's been my observation over many years of working with people that the way people do this is by learning how to honor and master their emotions and there's, there's some very basic simple skills that we can learn about our emotions that allow us to experience emotional safety inside ourselves and to experience emotional safety when we're with other people and it doesn't matter who those other people are you could be in an intimate relationship and experience deep emotional safety or you could be in a business and professional setting and feel emotional safety there of course it's a very different kind of emotional safety but it's still there where you're calm confident centered you're at peace everybody else can be going crazy around you and you feel very safe within yourself and so there's nothing that anybody says or does that really affects you okay. and it's not that you're detached it's that you're in this bubble of safety where you feel completely protected and that sounds lovely and wonderful and most people don't teach you the how of that That's so we correct. say oh yeah cultivate the emotional safety well how there's actually very specific steps they're simple steps. I wish we all learned them in kindergarten, but because we didn't, we get to learn them now. And there's another um, piece to that, so, uh, cultivating, practicing the very specific steps for cultivating emotional safety inside yourself and with others. And that is learning the very simple steps of how to validate yourself and cultivate a greater sense of self-worth, self-love. Because if I say to you, oh, just cultivate more self-love and self-worth, you'd be like, uh, how? step one, step two, step three. And so Doug and I are all about the how. Yeah, we all know about these challenges and, and struggles that we experience in our life. And what are simple steps that you can do to shift it? So we'll put some links up at the end of the video so that you can learn more about what we teach. And if it interests you, you can enroll in our courses. And learn the how. And learn the how.